there was one line he said, no, I'm mad. I thought he was going to say, I'm inevitable or something like that, but he just <laughs> said, I'm mad, like, because he's the mad tyrant. And then he goes and he fights it. I was like, oh my God, <laughs> that's like, shit. <laughs> that's just, I was like, ah. Fucking nerd geeking out to a T'Challa Star-Lord episode, Jesus Christ. <laughs> hey guys, and welcome back to Fortune Theory for another bonus. Yeah. Here we are again for week two of What If. It's all coming around so quickly now. She's... <laughs> <laughs> So this was a pretty good episode. Oh yeah, sorry. My name's Oliver. If you're new to the channel, and this is Patrick as How well. How you doing? Yeah, co-host. This the second guy in charge. Second. Uh, anyway, yeah, yeah. You know, so not delegated. The job, <laughs> the break, the uh, the um, oh, the time to the. What's Here it goes the, the long reel yeah. of secondaries. Yeah. <laughs> Time to the rosemary. There we go. That's the the um the deck to the ant the um the, the dom to the dick. And so what yeah, if? So um... uh, what if? Uh... <laughs> <laughs> oh, <boy. laughs> you get it, so, um, there was a lot to it. I really liked um, T'Challa being Star Lord. I thought almost seemed redeemable to Peter Quill's. Shall we say? unpopular pa fan opinion failure from um some of his decisions that he's made over the course of the guardians and avengers movies um mm -hmm. specifically in endgame when he decides to retaliate like a five-year-old not getting the toy he wanted from the toy store when uh, <laughs> Thanos <laughs> girly friend and yeah so brilliant that's so great Charla is definitely a, wor a worthy um alter well alter ego the a worthy mantle holder of star lord <laughs> yeah, <laughs> pretty say. much and it was a nice um there was a nice honoring tribute to him at the end of the episode as well which i thought was really good um like that not sure if i liked how they handled collector but because it definitely makes him different than obviously the live action but they've definitely redeemed his character through that scenario and i, I do find it a lot more interesting yeah um than he was like this sort of tame like non-athletic loser that he was in like the in or two in guardians Mm. when he appeared um thanos in it as well <laughs> I, I i didn't know that was going to happen in this episode and like i was so happy like his name was um josh brolin's name came up in the opening credits and i thought he's going to be in the episode oh my <laughs> god Ooh. i heard rumors about this and it was just it was so it was so great to see him back like i didn't think he'd be back so soon like no <laughs> and to hear him like not sound too Thanos. <laughs> yeah. He seemed like he really he was like flirty. I remember at the end of the episode he's flirting with like a Koye. Yeah. And then Nebula's just like, oh dad, stop. <laughs> and she's like, that sounds like genocide. And it was like, no, because it's at random. Just, you know, snap of the finger. <laughs> it's all good. Like, just snap your finger. Hell, oh. You don't picture this. Um <laughs> this from anything you've watched Marvel after you've seen the stuff before it. No. But oh god. Okay. So, I don't like I think it's great to see like how T'Challa as as Star Lord has like had such an impact on the universe mm. exterior to Earth, um, by you know redeeming those kind of characters. And I love like sort of Nebula almost comes across as like when she was first introduced, I almost didn't recognize her because obviously she's got the blonde hair and whatnot. And it yeah. was like she looked a little bit like a Marvel character called Super Giant. Which I'm not going to lie about, which I'm guessing she was substituting, which was a member of the Black Order that they cut from um, Infinity War and Endgame because they felt she was a bit OP uh, for to be under the reins of Thanos, um, and so therefore Nebula kind and Nebula kind of looked a bit like her anyway. So they, her, in terms of her MCU pure design, so they kind of I'm guessing they just sort of kept it that way. But I love the way she called um, T'Challa Cha Cha. <laughs> I was like, that wasn't ex I wasn't yeah. expecting at all. I was like, she was basically the substitute, like Gamora for the Guardians in that sense. Mm. And speaking of which, like Gamora is meant to be like the Thanos of this universe. So, like, I'm guessing we'll get to see what that's like over the next like few weeks. Whenever they do that episode, but mm. I know next week it's going to be Loki on Earth. So, I'm guessing it's going to be what happened mm. if Loki won. Yeah, um, the first event in the first Avengers film. Mm. That'll be interesting. Um, back to the back to Loki again after those great six weeks. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that show um, that ended last month. Um, so soon. Yeah, I'm. Um, really liked um a lot of the concepts that they brought into this episode. Um, with uh, Thanos's redemption arc, Nebula, like well, redemption arc just sort of 
post redemption arc black order now working for the collector they've pretty much stayed the same there you see a bit more of a ruthless side to them seeing thanos fight them was really like <laughs> unexpected and i think that's like exactly where they wanted to take with it it was like you've gone so far so soon just in one little short 20 to 30 minute story mm. evolving animated variants of these characters and they're just like going at blows with each other, <laughs> each other when like you would have only seen them two years prior on the same side. <laughs> and it's just holy shit. Like, what's that? Like, it know, just doesn't like, look right. But yeah. Thanos fighting his own like you know children of Thanos, Black Order, whatever you want to call them. Mm. Like, oh my god, it was a really it, good episode. Like, though. I think. Yeah. Oh, what was it? That there was one line he said, like you know, I'm mad or whatever. Like you know, are you crazy or whatever? And he's like, no, I'm mad. And then he <laughs> like. He says, like, I thought he was going to say I'm inevitable or something like that, but he just said I'm mad, like, because he's the mad tyrant. And then he goes and he fights them. I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> That's, like, shit. <laughs> That's just, I was like, ah. Yeah, you know, you're fucking nerd geeking out to a T'Challa Star-Lord episode. Jesus Christ. Um, yeah. I don't know. There's certain characters I like over others, um, but I think at the moment I'm 50% Peggy Carter, Captain Carter, um, fifty percent the Charla Star Lord. I'm like I love them kind of equally. They're they're amazing. Like t they're amazing titular leads so far for these episodes. Mm. When they combine for the last episode where they're dealing with this, I'm guessing multiversal, like the brinks of multi multiversal war, because yeah. they're branch reality variants of the normal timeline versions. Sick, basically. <laughs> oh, I was gonna say yeah. yeah, I really like this episode. It was um. A lot like the they're clearly showing like this it's obvious but the structure is like the same works really well with like obviously the flow of each episode and like the like going back to how it started from the very like opening scene with like present day and it just works really well and seeing you know a young t'challa like kidnapped technically and just like taken but um, it was really good. I really loved it. And <laughs> like you said, it was really... I couldn't get... It took me a moment or two to get used to, a, like, technically a good Thanos. <laughs> yeah. A Thanos just, I, like, I was a bit overwhelmed by it. Like, like, I'm guessing in this, in this version, like, he's, like, basically part of the Ravagers. Like, they just gather followers of people that support T'Challa Star-Lord, and then they become, like, more... Mm. They, were, they are pretty much like this anyway, but they're not as... They weren't represented as much as such in the films but like the ravagers are basically meant to be like these kind of this robin hood group of like steal from the rich but whereas in the films they present them as just they steal from everybody for profit yeah for their own sake basically so they can afford stuff whereas in this version they're like they are a gang of robin hoods mm, practically mm. um which was which was quite interesting and it was nice to see and i think it was it was really interesting like they did the whole Probably one of the most unexpected things was happened in like the first minute where Jim and Hansel's character, Korraf the Pursuer, turns up and he's like, I, I swear, like, instead of just using their voices, like, to, to dub specific lines, they just re, they just cut the clip from movie. So it said, so it said the exact same way. Because when um, Korraf said, drop it now, when he first comes in, that didn't sound like Jimin like doing another take of a line. It sounded like it was stripped straight from the first mo from the first Guardians movie. Same um, in the scene where Thanos is fighting um, Pile Obsidian and Proxima Midnight as well. There's a scream that he does, and it sounds just like the scream he did in Infinity War when Mantis um, had her hands on his head and was trying to put him in the trance, and all the Avengers and Guardians were holding him on Titan. It sounded like the exact same scream. I know scream. I know. People are gonna know what I mean if they're like big super Marvel fans like me. But yeah, wow, this feels like, this feels like I'm babbling like you were with Blade Runner. Jesus Christ! Yeah, I know. Yeah. Well, about... These are your babble episodes, but I mean, yeah. the, I get what I you mean with like the out of anyone who would have had lines used from their films, I would expect it to be Chadwick Boseman. Like out of anyone, and because obviously, unless they but he were... produced. He did the well produced. He did all of his lines for this season of the show before he passed away. So it was great to have him come back and it, like the tribute that they did from at the end. I was going to say they obviously nice. done it years oh. ago now, like almost years ago. It was um I think they started working on it 
two years ago. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I remember the D23 in about July, June, July time, 2019, when they announced all the Phase 4 projects. Obviously, they hadn't really like started it at that point yet. That would have been just over a year before he well, passed away. So. The voiceovers are probably like one of the first things you do, to be honest, especially in that. Yeah. So that was quite easy for them to... I'm guessing do. scripts had already been pre-written ages before that for them to at least announce those kinds of projects. Yeah. It's just a case of, they've announced it, they're up to speed with everything they just need to now go and shoot it pretty much or whatever yeah. which was probably the case with a lot of they've it. got the scripts for loads yeah probably like at least a couple to few years worth of them they obviously have the titles and the projects announced but like i reckon they've got at least a few years of scripts even if it's draft form just so it's secure and they've got an idea yeah on paper at least but yeah this um it's been in the works for a while and now it's finally here for everyone to enjoy. Up seeing to <laughs> seeing Korath though actually know who Star Lord was without even having him having to say his name. It's like, oh my god, you're Star Lord. Like he's obviously become this big celebrity or like um T'Challa's version has become like this big celebrity in the in the cosmos um for all of his heroic deeds and whatnot. Redeeming Thanos, um saving saving planets and assisting saving people from like, you know, just the bad dudes and like the ravagers being seen not as bad, and then they're all like working together co- coercingly. So, like you know, stealing the orb mm. to like give to the buyers to the sellers or whatever. I, I can't remember what that. I'm not up to speed with everything, but like I'm guessing it was something similar to what they were doing in the first Guardians movie, just less selfishly. Yeah. Um. But yeah, I'll probably need to go back and watch it a few times just to really get what's going on. Uh, because um, I was just a bit overwhelmed by like <laughs> good guy Thanos <laughs> for a start, and like just, yeah, um, it's a nice little cameo. At the end. Yeah, tell us what you yeah. think because there's a lot. Of, there's a lot. Like this is the first part. Red this is the first like <laughs> yeah. This is the first part of um of what if so far where they've like there's extremes to it where good guys are bad guys and bad guys are good guys in this. Um, because there wasn't really much of that in the first episode. It was just, it was kind of the same. It was Peggy just Carter being a few Captain different Carter. It was just that a few character swaps, but just like that, everyone else's roles were the same. Like it was just, oh, she's the hero instead of him. He's the average guy. She's the hero now, but everyone else is the same. Yeah, but that's why like, it's just yeah. a different timeline star. But now it's like everything's <laughs> like swap. Everyone's like swapping around something. Mm. Like seeing ego though, and it's like, it, well, they're either swapping it or they're like, they were it, but they've changed. Yeah. And like, mm. imagine like the core MCU, like, you know, sacred timeline, timeline, <laughs> where like Charlo had become Star Lord. That, that would have had such an impact. We wouldn't have had the, the, you know, the Infinity Saga that we have today no. throughout the first three phases of the MCU because he would have dealt with a lot of the main cosmic threats, Thanos included. Um, and Korath even gets a redemption arc just by being a fan of Star Lord. He becomes this really like <laughs> sort of like cosmic geek <laughs> towards him, and it's just like you wouldn't expect that from a character, especially one played by Jim and Hansel. <laughs> like, it's weird. It's so weird. I remember like I think he was in like Jungle Book a couple years ago, and like I thought to myself, I've never seen him cry in anything. <laughs> I've never seen him like look so dull and dumb. And yeah. then literally like less than two hours later on the film, he cries. And I'm like, what the <laughs> fuck did I pick that for? <laughs> oh god. God. But yeah, what if was really good. Uh was, give us your thoughts it's below. A great episode. Um, I love this episode. If you aren't watching it as well, be sure to start watching it if you haven't already, because we're spoiling it. Yeah, why are you here? Really why are you here? I'll watch it. Yeah, come on, yeah. guys. Links below and give share your thoughts as well. Thinking about it, I probably would say this is probably my favourite so far. <laughs> now Captain about Carter it, yeah. is definitely my, one of my favourite characters, but this episode and the, a lot of these characters are definitely winning it for me so far. So, And I'm winning over the animation of now as well. Yeah. It's, it's getting... It's growing on me a little bit. So, Nice. Win-win for this episode. <laughs> Keep it up. Marvel, <laughs> Disney. <laughs> um, you know, episode three, Loki on Earth. What happened if Loki wins in a... In, won the first Avengers battle or whatever like whatever the episode is going to be called we'll find mm. out but yeah and yeah we'll find out in a week's time <laughs> not very long away 
Yeah. That's about it. Um, Thanks. Another for, thing uh, else? Any other Marvel news? Uh, we said it all last week, really, didn't we? I think we got Probably. Uh, like. No, we've got the CinemaCon um, event coming up with Sony having a three hour presentation. That's on the 23rd of August, so that'll be next Monday. And there's been rumors that. Obviously, during that, they're going to talk about all that the whole deal with Amazon and the streaming because of Hotel Transylvania and loads of like main hardcore free time fans who have nothing better to do with their lives <laughs> are going to go there um, because they've got the time and money and they're going to wait for anything Venom and considering that's coming out first because they're going to want to do a huge meet like media marketing push for that because that's meant to be coming out in like September, October time. Mm. Then Morbius. Um, as well and obviously the big one the biggest one spider-man no way home we'll finally get a trailer for that if it's still expected to come out december 17th um that's here in the uk i don't i'm guessing it'll be roughly around the same time for everyone else but yeah exciting news but, um... so exciting news hopefully we will get something um i heard that they were only gonna release the trailer at the event but it won't come online okay. um they'd only do it that way if um they have to postpone it but at least they've got something out there um and then they will release that trailer that they show there um the moment they can green light december 17th as a definitive release without any delay which probably means we won't get the trailer till like 24 hours before the day <laughs> it comes out <laughs> Oh like um which to be honest wouldn't be that bad because that would be like so tight. <laughs> well, anticipation mean, like, let's go yeah. <laughs> like within like 12 to 24 hours oh, it just God. like I, I get it like <laughs> you know even if they had to leave it a week before like people would still be all over that stuff yeah mm. they would be <laughs> just do it the night before they'd still be hyped be crazy be yeah so um so bad any anything else any further comments on this episode that you can think yeah, of just go watch it if you haven't what are you doing here if you haven't watched it mark the link to just the what if series below share your thoughts below did you enjoy I'm this creative. episode i just said that <laughs> you're a creative <laughs> copy <cat. laughs> uh, anyway well to be fair we say that in every episode where we're reviewing something and we think why the hell are you here um why are you here? Yeah. You don't like it. Why are you here? <laughs> what are you? I'm the night manager. <laughs> no, it's the night guard. <laughs> what are you? The night guard. Do you yeah. want us to do a, a no, on, despite no. being like 11, 11 years late to the party? Oh, oh. Uh, well, sorry, no, 12 years late to the party, in fact. For Night the Museum 2, Battle of the Smithsonian, let us know in the comments. <laughs> and on that and note, anyway, yeah. thank you for watching, and we'll see you on Friday for Snake Eyes. So, or Saturday. Friday or Saturday. So, enjoy. In the meantime, a snap at random is not genocide. Later, guys. Jesus Christ. <sighs> Boom. <laughs> oh, fuck, what? Gordon. <laughs> <laughs> Keep that in. <laughs>